Okay, I'm going to show you three easy steps that will finish your image. Now I know a lot of people ask me, how do you know when you're done? Well, I have a very consistent workflow that really doesn't ever change. And I always know when I'm done because I've gone through every single step, right? So honestly, if you join my platform, we go through all of that stuff. But for today, I'm going to show you the three final steps that I do on my images, especially when I have an image like this that doesn't really have any kind of interesting or dynamic light. This was shot using just natural light, so it's usually kind of flat. Um, I do, during my editing process, try to reestablish my contrast. So this is an image that I decided to paint. And this is my painting right here. And for those interested in painting, don't forget to check out the Photoshop Creativity Summit that's being held March 23rd to the 26th. I am teaching two courses. One of them is how to paint in Photoshop. Now this particular image, I actually painted using one brush, just one brush for everything. The foliage, the rocks, the hair, the skin, the fabric, everything, one brush. And I would say this probably took me just under an hour to do. So painting Photoshop is not something that is gonna owe oh, hours and hours of editing. There is a learning curve though, so just be prepared for that. Anyways, so I am essentially finished with this image, finished painting it. I painted it on one layer. I didn't do multiple layers. This is simply my before picture. And then this is what it looked like after I finished painting it. Now I have done a couple curves adjustments on it throughout the process. Let's get into these steps. So my final steps take it from this, which is good, to this. So that is the look I'm, I'm always going for. I want that kind of dynamic lighting that really makes the image pop. Now there's three steps to this. There's one creating the dynamic light and I do that with curves and using a specific blend mode. And then the final one is checking my levels to make sure that my histogram is accurate. Even though you might calibrate your monitor consistently, even if you don't, a lot of times, especially if you print, you need to check your histogram just to make sure that your prints don't come up too dark. Okay, so let's turn that off and I'll show you exactly how I do it. So the first thing that I do is I just create a new layer and the blend mode that I like to use for this is called Color Dodge. Now, let me show you the difference between two settings within this Color Dodge, okay? So I'm just using a white color. I have a soft brush. My flow is at 14%. My opacity is always at 100. And if I do it on the first, which is just changing the blend mode to Color Dodge and don't do anything else, this is what it'll look like. So it kind of has this kind of misty, misty look, right? It's just like using actually just a regular brush. But we're just going to undo that. If I change one little setting, it creates dynamic lighting. So I'm going to double click that layer and I'm going to turn off this transparency shapes layer, just like this. Now watch when we do this. Aha, dynamic light. Right, so we might have a little bit on the shoulder down here. It's wherever you wish there was sunlight hitting her or maybe off camera flash, something like that. But you know, if you're into art like I am, if you look at some of the old masters, one of my favorite Italian painters is not actually an old master, but his name is Pino. And I own several of his art pieces and he always has dynamic lighting. So even if the image that I'm working on doesn't initially have that dynamic lighting, I know how to create it. And that's the key, right? With any kind of art. And so you just need to know where to add a little hint of highlights in your image to make it really, really pop. So I tend to do this in the images that I paint that have less dynamic light. So we're just going to add little, little tiny dabs like this. You can even add a little bit, perhaps if you make your brush smaller on her knee like that. And don't worry if you go too heavy handed like that initially, I'll show you how to reduce. Maybe if you went a little too strong, you can also reduce your flow if you wanted to, 
but I find that this just really takes the painting over the top once you're finished if you want that more dynamic lighting to it. So I'm just looking at the highlights that exist and maybe where that light would kind of flow down from above. That probably a little bit up here and probably just a bit from the, the light source here to the left. So the light would maybe spill down here a little bit and over here even perhaps a little bit here okay so now when you feel like you've got enough and even if you feel like maybe some of the areas too blown out I'll show you what you do I'm just gonna add a little bit more I'm gonna put my flow down I'm gonna add a little bit to her face just like that okay so that's before and that's after. Do you see how dramatic it is? Now, if you want to reduce the opacity, just remember that don't touch your opacity. See over here where your opacity is? Don't use that. When you're using a dynamic light like this, and that goes for anything underneath your blend modes, like anything in your lighten menu or your overlay menu like that, if you are gonna change the opacity, don't use opacity, use fill. And the reason for that is because it's more subtle in the gradations and it's going to affect it better than just the general overall opacity of that layer. So that's before and that's after, okay? Dynamic light done, just like that. Next step is to go into our selected color. Now, one thing I do want you to consider when it comes to art, so this is not photography. You could use the same rules in photography, but for art like this, our shadow is always black. They're not actually. Um, usually, if you're looking at art, shadows are more saturated than midtones or even highlights. And I'll give you an example. So if I come over here to my blacks, let's just open this up a bit so you can see. Now, what is the general color of the shadows in this? Usually if you have warm highlights or warm midtones, you're going to want a cooler shadow. And in order to do that, you would use blue. So let's pull our blue to the left a little bit. Now, it's up to you if you want to keep your shadows really dark or if you want to maybe increase the blacks just a little bit so it's not so much. I would add a little bit of magenta into those shadows as well so between the blue and the magenta you're going to have more of a purple which is definitely more in line with what you see more often in art okay and that's essentially all i would do i'm not going to affect the skin tones they're good enough and the whites are all good enough too so that's the only thing i'm going to do for color toning this image because i've worked it enough that i already have it the way i want it to be and then of course the last thing that we're going to do with this is we're gonna go to our curves adjustment. And if you open up your curves adjustment down here, if you simply pull this to the right from the bottom just a little bit, like that, that's gonna pull your darks down again. And that's gonna increase your contrast. Now you could go back to your selective color now and pull those blacks up just a bit just to equal it out. So let's look at the before and the after. See how we've added those beautiful kind of purpley tones into the darks. And then of course, the last thing that I always do is I just check my levels to make sure my histogram is equal on each side, which it is, okay? And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and shut this group. And that's the before and that's the after. So you see how it completely finishes it and transforms it from more of a flat image to a more dynamically lit one. And just really quickly, I will show you another painting that I did. Same thing with this one. So this one, this is before I had my dynamic lighting and this is after. And I did the exact same thing with it. You can see my color toning in my shadows and everything I adjusted using the selective color. So I hope this helps you. And again, if you want to join me to learn how to paint, don't forget to check out the links in the description below. You can join for free or you can become a VIP. It's totally your choice. See you later.